So our first speaker coming out here was born and raised in Cleveland and graduated from the University of Michigan. He was drafted in 1993 in the NFL draft with the San Francisco 49ers earning a Super Bowl championship. This gentleman went on to play for Kansas City, Kansas City Chiefs, earning a Pro Bowl appearance in, in the year 2000, and he finished his career with the Baltimore Ravens. This man has been married to his high school sweetheart for 25 years, 25 years. They have three beautiful children, and they live in Chagrin Falls. Please welcome Elvis Gerbach. Elvis. Elvis. Okay, uh, no more Michigan jokes, okay? We might, we might beat, actually, Ohio State this year. We'll see. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, hey, I never lost to Ohio State, so there we go. Um, hey, first and foremost, I want to thank all you guys coming out, okay? Tonight, obviously with the weather and everything, um, it just kind of goes to show that you take your faith pretty serious. And I think in this day and age, I think we need more men like us, okay? Not only for ourselves, but our families also. Not only to our children, but to our wives, to our relatives. Uh, we have a great opportunity. That I think there's a, there's a lot of things happening good in our communities. And I go around the country and I give talks all over the place. I'm going to Chicago this weekend, and I guarantee you this. There's going to be probably about 1,000 guys there, even in light of what's going on in the church. Guys are going to still step up. Okay? So I want to thank you for being here. Secondly, I got to say thank you to Greg and the staff putting this together, inviting me to come. Yeah, give them a round of applause. Absolutely. Um, I will say this, guys. Everywhere I give a talk, I do one thing, and I promise myself to do this. Are there any veterans in the room? Please stand up. Thank you. Thank you. Obviously, you know why I do that, because of what has happened in the NFL in the last couple of years, right? Okay? And I equate it to this kind of. If I put a white line here on this stage, okay, you have grown men that train themselves to take a stupid ball and take that ball over a white line, and you get paid millions of dollars for it. Go figure. But here we have, what, 30, 40 guys that stepped over that line and gave their life. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay? So as a former NFL player, I want you to know that I will always stand with you guys. Always. Thank you. Okay? <laughs> Now, tonight, um, I'm going to kind of give a personal reflection of kind of an episode that happened to me in the NFL while I was playing with my oldest son, Jack, okay? Um, the way I want to start this is always, always start with Scripture. I learned that from a man that's sitting right up here in this front row right here. You know, my conversion, you know, I was Catholic all my life, okay? But there's somebody in my life that I got to know pretty well and still know pretty well. It showed me what this can do for you, okay? Do not be afraid of this book. Open it up, read it, let it lead your life, because it's going to lead you right on the right path, okay? So I'm going to open up Scripture, and I'm kind of reflecting right now in Mark's Gospel. And as you can see, I'm constantly writing things down, okay? What I want to be able to do tonight, guys, is this. I want to be able to reflect on Christ's temptation in the desert, the three temptations that he goes through. And how do you interplay that, okay, on a daily basis, like something like that I went through in the NFL with my oldest son, Jack. Okay, so if you think about, I'm going to just let you know, Matthew's Gospel, 
chapter 4, okay? And the three that I really, I'm going to focus in on is this. The first one, Christ replies to Satan. And he says this. One does not live on bread alone, but every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Okay, so let that just sit in for, there for a second. The second one is just interesting. Okay, so Satan goes, but it is written. So he's sitting there going, I know scripture just as well as you do. And I know what's written. Christ replies what? Shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Okay, remember that. And the final one, you know, Satan does what? He goes, I'll give you everything. The entire world. You can have it all. And what does Christ reply? The Lord your God shall you worship and him alone shall you serve. Okay? Three very basic temptations, right? Okay. Okay. I have an oldest son, Jack, who lives in Chicago now. Uh, went to school here, actually. And my second son went to school here. And I have a daughter. She got all the athletic genes. She's an outside hitter for Northwestern. She's about 6'2". If she walked in here, you'd be like, oh, yeah, she's an athlete. Okay? My oldest son, Jack, was born my third year in the league when I was playing with the San Francisco 49ers. He was born with something called spina bifida occulta. Okay? And let me just say this. Everybody goes through something in their life. There's every guy in this room is going to sit here and say, you know what, I went through something just like that, or I'm going through something right now. We're going to suffer. We're going to be challenged. Whatever it is, okay, you can go to this, and it'll give you every answer. Okay? So my oldest son, let me, let me just say this. So when my oldest son was born, um, there was a kind of like a dimple at the base of his spine. And if you took like a golf ball and cut it in half, that's what it looked like. And within that half sphere was this little indentation in it. And our pediatric, uh, our doctor at the time said, don't worry about it. It's, it's closed. It's okay. So my son developed. He was born in January, January 30th. Um, we had him for the whole summer. Everything was going great, okay? But my wife kind of noticed any time she would change his diaper or if he, like, fell on his butt, he would start crying, I mean, unbelievably, okay? So my wife, you know, mother's intuition, right? Says, let's get an MRI on this, okay? So sure enough, the MRI shows off this fat tissue at the base of his spine, there's like a, how can I can describe this? Almost like an umbilical cord. Okay? And it's run, running up into his spinal cord. And as you know, off your spinal cord, all your nerves come out there and start feeding down into your legs, right? My son's nerves was wrapped around this fat tissue. Okay? The number one pediatric neurosurgeon in the world, where do you think he lives? San Francisco, Ohio. Or San Francisco, California, I'm sorry. I'm going to just say this, God works in mysterious ways, okay? He described the surgery, which took about seven, eight hours. And he took my son and filleted his spine, the base of his spine, wide open. And he said he had to take bubble gum out of hair. It's the best way he could describe it. So he had to leave the nerves, but he had to, you know, extract that fat tissue. And if he would have even just barely touched one of the nerves, that nerve was dead for the rest of his life. A lot of trust, okay? A lot of people know me in this room. They've seen my kids. They've seen my oldest son. He's a rock star. He lives in Chicago. He's doing great, okay? Now, the kicker is this. I'm playing for the San Francisco 49ers. In the season, my son has surgery. Tuesdays are my day off. Everybody in the NFL, it's always Tuesday. Had surgery. We're playing the Dallas Cowboys that week coming up. And at that time, I was the backup to Steve Young. And the Cowboys are a huge rival for us. We're at playing that candlestick. And I go to George Seifert, the head coach. I said, hey, I'm going to be up in the city because where we practiced was in San Jose. 
And if anybody of you guys know San Francisco and San Jose, it's probably about an hour and a half distance from each other. So am I going to be up in the city? And I'm not going to have time to come to practice. I've got to be there for my son. I've got to take care of whatever I have to take care of. He goes, go. Here's the playbook. You know what you're doing. Show up on Sunday. If we need you, you can play. It's like, great. Okay. Unbelievable that he totally trusted me like that. But that was part of Mr. DeBartolo's way of handling things, too. Family was very, very important. Sure enough, Steve Young gets hurt. I go in the game. Am I ready? No. No, I'm not ready. I throw a pick by the 20-yard line in OT. Going, I'm deep in our end zone. Aikman hits a couple passes here and there, and they kick a winning field goal. After the game, I don't realize this is what happened. The mayor of San Francisco, Willie Brown, calls me. Let me put it this way. He calls me the disgrace of humankind from a football game. Okay? So I don't, I don't know this is going on because I, right after the game, I, just, I go to the hospital. And my son is there, and I finally get back on, I think, Monday afternoon or something like that. Back in the day, you, know, you got your, your voicemail or whatever, and I said, click it on. 50 mo- voicemails. I'm like, what the hell just happened? I had every person probably in the newspapers from San Francisco all the way to New York calling my home wanting a comment on Willie Brown and how he, what he called me after that game. Now, let's just say this. So I'm, a married, I'm married for 25 years to an Italian, Irish, Romanian woman. There's a little gypsy in there, okay? She goes ballistic. I mean, she wanted to rip this guy's head off, okay? Somewhere out of nowhere, I had the entire different response. I don't know where it came from. Upon reflection, I was like, really? It was almost like a a calmness that came over me. Almost a a humility. A humbleness. In a situation like that, where everybody in this room has probably gone through something like this, or is going through it, and somebody wrongs you. That's what I had to do. I didn't realize I was doing it, but that's what I had to do. And so if we kind of reflect on those three temptations of Christ in in the Matthew's Gospel, what is the first one? Do not live on bread alone, but on the word of God. A lot of ways to interpret that, right? If we truly believe that we are all created in God's image, every one of us, human being in the world, there is an echo within us. And as long as we listen, it will speak. And it will lead you. Figure, right? If you take the time to do that, it will give you in total understanding a compassion, a loving response in a situation that calls for what? Revenge. I want revenge. You wrong me, I want it. Second temptation. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Christ, God, come down right now on this person, on this community. They wrong me. I want revenge. No. God says no. Doing the will of the Father. Humble yourself in a loving response. Crazy it sounds, but that's what we're called to do. Now, the third one. 
Okay? The Lord your alone shall you what? Worship and serve. Was I? Yes, I was. Not realizing that I was. Hmm. Upon reflection, really as an adult, that was taught to me, okay, that I can go into Scripture and every point of my life, Christ was there. He was there. Leading me, showing me, telling me. Guys, if you do one thing, if you get one thing out of this, please open this up. Read his word. Read it, take it in, and live it. I say that. I'm telling you, I'll put my life on it. I'll, I'll, put, I'll put everything. I'm, I'm, I'm dead honest. I will put everything on it. You open this up on a daily basis. Start with the Gospels. Start with Christ right in the center of your life. I'm telling you, it's going to change your life. For the greatness of you, the flourishing of you, the freedom that you're seeing, the peace. Everybody in this room wants peace. You're right there. You're right there. You have to just open up to him. He did the greatest thing for us. We are called to do the greatest thing for him. Mm. Okay. I'm going to leave you with this. Two things I'm going to leave you with. So I'm studying over at St. Mary's Seminary. I'm getting my master's in theology. It's a challenge. I went back to school for, I, I don't know, I went to Michigan, got my brain just beat in going there. And now I'm at the seminary with all the seminarians. It's great. Trust me, it's awesome. But I will leave you this. There's a thing that we talk about, and there's guys in this room that have heard this before, because I, I know a lot of the guys. Christ giving Christ to Christ. What? Christ giving Christ to Christ. The best example I can give you is this. Holy Communion. The greatest thing that you could ever do for yourself. Go every day. Receive the body and blood of Christ every day. I'm telling you. I'm just telling you what it will do for you. Make an effort to do it. When you go receive Holy Communion, we are Christ. St. Paul says it greatly. Christ lives within me. Go up. Not only are you receiving, what are you doing? Giving. Giving yourself over to Christ. Christ, giving Christ to Christ. Absolutely. Okay? Now, there's tons of different ways we can do it. Sign a peace. Go out in the real world. Real world. Okay? When you get to know me, I'm a huge saint. Uh, John's gospel is huge for me. Huge. I don't know why. Um, maybe the poetic part of it or whatever. Okay? I'm going to leave you with this. And I'm struggling with this right now. Okay? There's some things going on in my life, my personal life, spiritually, that I'm getting really challenged right now. Really challenged. That's a whole other story. And I'll give you this. John chapter 14. What does Christ say? I give you a new commandment. Give you one. Just take this one. Just take this one. And it's all you need. I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples. And if you have love, sorry, you, they, will know, they will know you as my disciples if you have loved one another. That's the hardest thing to do. When a guy who is in a political position calls you that, and you're in that situation, 
and you're going to say, I got to love that person? Yes. He did. He absolutely did. Forgive them for what they may not know what they do. To the last moment, he went to the cross humbly, quietly, and took it for us. For us! A bunch of guys sitting in Breen Center at St. Ignatius High School in 2018. He did it for us. Men, you want to be a disciple? You want to be a disciple of Christ? Keep the one commandment and love each other, not in this room, out there in the real world. That's where they will know us and the way we love each other. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Go blue. blue. (laughs) Thank you. Awesome job, brother. Awesome job. Appreciate it. Elvis Gerbach.